A skills boot camp is an opportunity for adults over the age of 19 to come and join a course with us, a short course, usually around 12 weeks, to learn about a skill that's going to help them get into a different kind of employment. So it's an opportunity for people to come along and actually use a passion or something that they're really interested in to yeah, upskill and actually get a career in that area, which is a really amazing opportunity. It doesn't matter whether they're employed, at work at the moment, self-employed, it's a chance to learn a new skill and build a career in a new sector. The biggest successes of the skills boot camps has been the ability to have people from all over the UK come together remotely to learn new skills to then progress into a career within tech. Um, another thing that I've seen which has been really great is a lot of women coming and applying for the skills boot camps and these then lead to more tech roles so it's been really exciting seeing the confidence in, in women and, and other people coming along and taking it and really enjoying it so I've loved seeing that. So for me the biggest successes of the, the skills boot camps of the last year have been the, the fact that we've seen lots of students move into to, to new jobs within new sectors that they previously didn't have any experience of to upskill, to reboot, and be successful basically in a new, new career. So in terms of the employability skills they learn in the boot camp, they learn a lot of the traditional stuff, so CVs and how to fill in job application forms, interview techniques, but also a lot around confidence and self-esteem. It might be that they're returning to the, the jobs market after a long break, for example. And we also look at presentation skills, how to pitch, psychometrics, all the type of things that are done in modern recruitment. In the boot camps, the environment is really collaborative and interactive. A lot of our courses um, are online, they can be hybrid. So because of that, we really do try to make them as collaborative as possible. We have spaces online to interact with the other students. And this really helps with them when they're going out into the workplace because they're learning how to work with other people. And on the boot camps, there are so many different employability backgrounds that they've come from. So it means that they're getting a real taste for yeah, all sorts of different skills and things that they can add to their future career. Emerge a unique multidisciplinary creative practice studio for Bar Spa University grads. A creative incubator, helping emerging talent bridge the gap between university and the professional world. Giving creatives and artists of any discipline vital space, skills development, funding opportunities, and a path to flourish. Emerge supports artists from across the creative disciplines, so there's my field, creative media and technology, but also we have fine art, performers and anything across all of the creative disciplines. The support each of us receives is fantastic, whether that's professional assistance with our own careers, support expanding our own business capabilities, or simply somebody to have a tea and a catch up with. The creative mentorship and resident relationship is really important because on Emerge it provides that space to really understand how to build professional relationships with other people without having it be scary for the wider world. I look after the design residents and they can be from multi-disciplines which is really interesting. They will be on their own path and I'm here to support them and it's the support that they need which a lot of people never have. Emerge is more than just developing your own practice. It's about sharing, supporting and learning new skills from each other. Everyone has something to offer and everyone has something to learn. So Emerge has allowed me to make the transition from a postgraduate to, to somebody working in the industry. I've been able to test new workshop ideas here at Emerge, develop them, fine tune them and then share them beyond these walls and um, turn them into part of my portfolio. Emerge offers the vital resource of space and time that's key to all artists' development. It has bespoke spaces from artist studios, rehearsal rooms, desks and project spaces. 
I engage with Merge primarily through the use of the space. It allows me to create like larger scale works because I'm not at home and I can leave things up to dry. And also just having other artists around me, you can sort of nip over for a quick opinion, you can look at their work for inspiration. It all just helps to create this atmosphere of creativity. Pop in for a visit, meet the team, and follow us on socials for updates on events, showcases, and residency opportunities. Creativity is so much more than people think it can be. It is telling your stories your way. As people, we imagine and we make, often at the same time. We have an urge to create, no matter if you're just starting out or have been a master for years. It's not money that will change the world or politics. It's the sensible use of creativity, the intelligent choices about intent, and the ethical basis for action. It doesn't come from hot, sweaty offices, it doesn't come from banks, and it doesn't come from armies. It comes from inside your head. Curiosity is asking why. It's time to explore how things can be done differently, what we should be doing, and why we should be doing it. We must learn from others, especially those who are different from ourselves. Curiosity means constantly looking for new ways of doing things. It is the glue that binds us together and enables us to see things in new ways that maybe weren't there before. Confidence is being able to step out of your comfort zone and try something new and innovative. It's finding creative ways to solve problems that wouldn't work any other way. Confidence is earned. Push yourself, celebrate your wins, and learn from your failures. Repeat, and your confidence will grow. It's time to own your own creativity, curiosity, and confidence, because they will be your superpowers. We are Bath Spa University, inventors of professional creativity.
Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you for bearing with us while we made a few last minute uh, adjustments. High risk being in a room with 200 teachers starting late in there. Oh my goodness, don't glare at me. <laughs> um, welcome, everybody. Uh, it is my pleasure uh, and honor um, to take us through proceedings today as Master of Ceremonies. My name is Mark McGuinness. I've worked at the university um, for 20 years, I'm a member of the academic staff and I've got two main jobs to do today. The first one is to speak to our graduates to describe the flow and the shape of the ceremony that will unfold over the next hour or so. And I'll do that in a moment. And then during the ceremony proper, it will be my role just to move people in and out of the stage as we go through the various phases of the ceremony. So you'll see me pop up from time to time. So before I go into those details, could I give you a first chance to check that your mobile phone has been set to silent or switched off as I go through these preliminaries? I'd be grateful if you could. So my first task in these uh, preliminaries is to say some thank yous. Um, there's four thank yous I'd like to say, and I'd, I'd invite you to give all four of them a round of applause after the fourth one. So the first one is the team here at Bath Forum. Always a pleasure to come here. Thanks for your support in staging such complex events during this week. I'd also like to thank our colleagues and friends down at Bath College, whose facilities we've used this, this afternoon to do robing, uh, very conveniently located. Thank you to them. Thank you to all the academic and professional services staff at the university who have contributed their time to make this event happen, not just today, but for many weeks, bringing things together Many of you will be aware that the education sector generally is impacted by industrial action at the moment. That has made it a little bit more difficult this year, but we have persevered and we think we've got everyone here today who needs to be here. So that's, uh, that's thank you to all those colleagues. And finally, I would like to invite everyone in the room to say thank you to our live musicians here at the front who've enta entertained us for the last half an hour or so and we'll continue to accompany the, the proceedings as we go through. Could I ask you all to give a round of applause to all of those? Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you. So the graduation ceremony then. So here I'll address the graduates specifically. So when the time comes, we will go to the presentation of awards and I'll make that announcement. Um, you will shortly after I make that announcement, the first row will be asked to stand and to come into this channel just here to your right at the front of the stage. Everybody else can just sit and watch. When it's your turn, you will, your row will be asked to stand up at the same time and to move into that position. And essentially, you will, you will move across uh, up these steps here in front of me. At the top of the steps, my colleague Helen will check your name. It will be, you will be asked that a few times because we need to keep you in the right order that the readers expect you to be there. They have lists that correspond to the ones that we have. So do please stay in the order that you are seated because that, that is the order. Once you're at the top of the stage, uh, the graduation reader, who is a member of academic staff from the School of Education, will read your name and you'll be invited to move across the stage. There's a blue carpet here on the stage. Do keep to the carpet, it takes you straight across to the other side. Uh, the Vice-Chancellor is overseeing proceedings today. She will be stood in the middle of the, uh, of the stage area. She will acknowledge your achievement as you pass. She'll tip her hat, she may give you a smile, she may even um, ask you something. Um, there's no, no need to handshake, none of that. Uh, we, don't, we don't do that in these ceremonies, it's contact free. So please do just give her a quick acknowledgement and more importantly, look out to your guests. See if you can find them, give them a wave. Hand in the air. A dance. <laughs> moonwalk, can anyone moonwalk? Right, okay, I can't, anyway, anyway. <laughs> So, once you are across the stage, you will exit the other side and you will be guided back around that side of the auditorium, around the back of the auditorium and back through to the seat you are currently sat in. That hopefully allows you now to relax, you know you're going to be guided, everything's going to be pretty much taken care of, just follow our instructions. Now, I've already had a word with Phoebe, who's first up today. And as long as she gets it right, <laughs> everyone else can just follow the person in front of them. No pressure, Phoebe. I've given a full briefing. It will work smoothly. So um, thank you for taking on that challenge for you. Right, great. OK, so I will then move us along uh, to confirmment of the award, of the awards that we see presented here today where the Vice-Chancellor will symbolically confer those awards. And it's that point she will invite our graduates to remove their hats. She will ask the academic staff if they wish to remove their hats earlier on in the ceremony, but you have to wait. Symbolic act, I suppose, the last chance we get to tell you what to do. I suppose that's what it is. Then, after that, we will close the ceremony, and uh, I will give that, that instruction when we move into that phase. And at that point, I would ask all graduates, again, we will get you up row by row and we will exit you all in an orderly fashion out of the exit in the corner of the auditorium over there where I'm pointing to, the, to your left. That takes you out into Somerset Street, which we've got control today to keep it traffic free, to keep you safe as you exit the building, move away from the building so we can uh, prevent bottlenecks forming. I ask everybody else in the auditorium to please be patient as we do that. Um, if everybody got up at the same time to get through the number of exits in the building, that would just mean that everyone would be standing rather than sitting. So do please um, wait until the, the crowd subside. We will get all the graduates out. And this year we are trying something new. We're going to do an outdoor graduation reception at Parade Gardens. I'm sure you've been given the information on that. But once you're in Somerset Street, your graduates and your guests, we, are, we can take you across to Parade Gardens. It's a short walk and we'll, our members of staff will be offering guided walks over there to make sure that people get to that event. There's also a free drink. I've got your attention now, haven't I? Right, free drink, right. But make sure you get your wristband for that and we should get Somerset Street. So, that is me. I've just got a final few bits of housekeeping to add. Uh, a second opportunity to check your mobile phone. If you haven't had a chance to do that yet, we do, of course, have first aid trained staff available. If you need any assistance, do just please ask any member of staff and we'll get that to you quickly. And in the unlikely event we need to evacuate the building for any reason, there will be a clear instruction to do so. Please leave by the nearest available exits, which are clearly marked 
on both levels of the auditorium and we will, um, we will guide you out, our staff will make sure that everyone's out safely. So, finally, congratulations. We are at your graduation ceremony. If I could ask everybody to stand for the academic procession. be seated. Distinguished guests, graduates, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I call upon the Vice-Chancellor of Bath Spa University, Professor Sue Rigby, to open this graduation ceremony. Welcome. It's wonderful to see you all. So you are our friends, our guests, our graduates, and of course colleagues who may now remove your hats if you wish to. A very warm welcome to the final Bath Spa University summer graduation. So to begin with, we were offering extra glasses of champagne or a gin and tonic if you spotted a deliberate error. I'm prepared to extend that one final time. So in Parade Gardens, just let us know what you saw and you will get an extra drink. Welcome to our ceremony. What is it? It is a celebration of your fantastic achievements. Many of you aren't new to this. This is the second time that you've graduated with an increasingly sophisticated and difficult to achieve qualification. You're old hands, but this is still the most exciting of days. Welcome everyone also to the forum. This is an amazing venue run by the most professional of good friends of Bath Spa University. And an early shout out to all the people who've helped you to be seated, to know your place, I mean in a good way, to know when you graduate, whether you're looking at someone who's a musician, an usher, a live streamer, a first aider, one of our registrars. They all have day jobs in the university, but want to support our graduation so that we can be present at this celebration of what you've accomplished. Because celebrate is exactly what we are here to do. And also to take a moment to consider what your qualification means and what you can and now should do with it. Now I'm going to digress for a moment. In most parts of the Christian church, 
there are moments of transition that are considered to be affirmations of faith or engagements with the faith community and to be recognized by God. Depending on what part of the Christian faith you belong to, they include things such as baptism, confirmation, marriage, ordination. In our secular and more properly plural society, there are only one or two transitions that everyone would recognize as being on that scale. Finishing higher education is without question one of them. It's a huge personal achievement. It's a permanent mark of the status that comes from that achievement. And it is, I think, also a moment when what you are receiving is also something that enriches society more widely and which carries with it the burden and privilege of enhanced expectations. So to begin, a moment to think about your achievement. I'll start by stating the blindingly obvious, your qualification was not easy to get, yeah? It wasn't, it wasn't a breeze. Um, you'll have been uncertain, your first assessment deadline. You'll have been confused and frustrated as you struggled to understand what good meant in this new context, and then eventually what outstanding and brilliant meant in that context. You'll have been stressed when too much was asked of you in too short a time. And occasionally, you'll have been elated by a really good mark, by an eye-opening seminar, by a brilliant class that you taught, by a sudden personal moment of insight that upended your previous understandings of your discipline. And you've also done this through the COVID academic, epidemic um, and through the restless anxiety of our post-COVID recovery. What I want to stress is that this does not make you victims. It makes you supers. You may remember a very famous pair of dancers from the last century, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. And someone once asked Ginger what it was like partnering with the best dancer in the world. She paused for a moment and then commented that everything he did, she did backwards and in high heels. You are Ginger Rogers. Earlier and later graduates are only Fred Astaire's. But as you sit here as a successful graduate, just take a moment to reflect on your journey as you might think soup to nuts, the highs and the lows, every single one of you has trodden an individual path. Just spend a few seconds now thinking back over that and thinking how very far you've come. Always hard to know how long. Particularly after lunch, I imagine one or two of you will just want to lull into sleep. That's fine too. Um, looking back, I'm sure that you'll be absolutely clear about the critical part that the support of your family and friends has had in helping you get here today. Many of these vital people are in the room now, and all the rest are thinking of you with great affection. They're either watching the live stream, or they're shouting at their telly and trying to get the live stream up, or at the very least, they are thinking affectionately of you as they go about their day jobs. So in a moment, what I'd like to ask you to do is to stand up, to turn to face your supporters who are here today, and give them an enormous, loud, and prolonged round of applause. Okay? Would you like to stand up? Turn around and say thank you. I often wonder as an audience if you'd prefer if we moved two or three chairs away whilst they're standing up. It would just be a moment of levity, wouldn't it? But I, I try to persuade my staff not to do it. <clears throat> so no need to stand again. You'd be nervous too after I said that, and I didn't mean to make you nervous. Um, I'd like to 
if I may, invite you to also thank the staff who've taught you and supported you in other ways through your studies. I'm privileged to lead a group of outstanding academics and professionals who have you, their students, always at the heart of what they do. They work late hours, and many of them, and they are as delighted with your attainments as you are. So please join me in thanking them now. Next, I want to take a few minutes to think about what your degree or your higher qualification actually comprises. Knowledge, for sure, but knowledge is transient, sorry. Most of what you've learned you are going to forget in the next decade. And most of what you remember will be the bits that actually have become irrelevant because something new happened. Uh, it's better for you than people graduating in cybersecurity. I, I often think that degree goes out of, of date almost before a graduation is possible. You also have a bit more durability, but a degree is about knowledge, but it's not defined by knowledge. So what then? Skills. You can do things that only a tiny minority of people can do, whether that's teach a child to read, inspire a class, coach a struggling student, or in the fullness of time lead a school. That may well be where your personal journey begins. For you who have a vocation, it may be where it ends. But your qualification offers you much more than that. It's the means by which you've learned to be resilient, to be resourceful, to lead, sometimes to actively follow, to be sure of your own capabilities, to be able to tackle profound challenges. A Bath Spa degree or a higher degree from us has enabled you to build your confidence. You know how much you can achieve. It's built your curiosity about people, about culture, about the future, about the world you inhabit, about the world you would like to inhabit. It's built your creativity, your ability to think outside the box, to ask the right questions and to answer those questions in a way that makes a difference. That is the true value of the qualification that you take today. As you walk across the stage in a few minutes, you should take stock of all of this, own it, internalize it, and become it. It's a walk of a few steps from the end of your studies to the start of your graduate life, but it's a profound transition and a permanent change. As you start this journey, you begin by leaving us. So this is a high point in the university calendar, a day of great joy, but also a day of great sadness. A university is a community of learners, no more and no less. And you have been a central part of that community and your contribution has been incredible. While we'd have it no other way than you graduate from our world and move on, you leave a big gap and we are very sorry to be saying goodbye. But keep in touch. You are always part of the Bath Spa community. We have your backs. And if we can help in any way in the years to come, just reach out and ask. And we would love to hear about your successes and stories in the coming years. And this is a community to be very proud of. Our roots stretch deep, back to the 1850s. And since that time, some of Britain's finest artists and teachers have worked with us. But we are a university of the 21st century, designed to meet the challenges of a post-industrial, highly volatile and rapidly changing world. Finally, I want to reflect on what your degree means to the rest of us, to the wider society that now benefits from what you can do. You graduate into uncertain times with an academic armory that will allow you to thrive and more importantly, which can contribute to helping others to thrive as well. Your qualification from the School of Education is your passport to a changing world in which you change the world and you will do it one child or one adult at a time. In your career, in all probability, you will teach a child who could be the next Einstein. You will teach a Nelson Mandela you will teach a Rembrandt, 
You will teach a Mozart. You will teach the future leaders of industry and politics. You will teach doctors, nurses, social workers. You will teach future parents. Whomever you teach, they will take from you a sense of potential, an adventure in learning, a sense of the boundless potential of every human being, and a sense of the responsibility and privilege that this potential implies. Your job is the most critical that exists in any society, and I am so proud of what you will achieve every day for the rest of your lives. Wherever you go, you will make a difference, and that's vital. From here on in, there's no endpoint assessment, no marking criteria for your work, just that small voice inside that expresses pride and satisfaction when you do the right thing, when you are, when you are brave, when you don't feel it, when you add certainty and sometimes uncertainty to the lives of others. And if I had to choose a set of people to make change and to make things better, it would be you, our graduates. And just now, I can ask no less of you than that you thrive in your life journeys, that you make a difference, and that in doing so, piece by piece, you change everything. You have the rest of your life to spend, and I'll be delighted to watch as you spend it wisely and for the benefit of others in these complicated times. So well done, graduates. This is a great day. Have a great day, and congratulations, you deserve it. Well done. So we now move to the presentation of awards to graduates of Bath Spa University, and I call upon the Vice-Chancellor to receive the graduates from our School of Education. Vice-Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGC Primary and Early Years 3 to 7. Phoebe Emmeline Baker-Johnson. <laughs> Shannon Francis Barry. <laughs> Mayor Southern Crawford. Lauren Louise Dodd. Annabelle Bernadette Flores. Abigail May Gubb. Grace Hale. Jane Harry. Amy Catherine Hill. <laughs> Amelia Rose Lynn. <laughs> Tracy Ann Moody. <laughs> Darcy Node. <laughs> Lucy Kate Part. Stephanie Rowe. Amberly Renee Smith. Lily Mae Tucker. Grace Lewin Wallace. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidate for the awards of Professional Graduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 5 to 11 route. Sophie Victoria Cooper. <laughs> Daisy Emmett. 
Rachel Fazakli. <laughs> Jessica Garcia. Cameron Tonks. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of postgraduate certificate in education with QTS recommendation in primary PGCE 5 to 11. Lauren Louisa Adicott. Georgia Elizabeth Alexander. Phoebe Elizabeth Bellaby. Amy Bird. Katie Mae Bobby. <laughs> Rosalind Lucy Bridger. Zara Lee Brockhill. <laughs> Megan Emily Bush. <laughs> Georgia Clark. Alex Costello. <laughs> Bethany May Davy. <laughs> Charlotte Durrance. <laughs> Abby Franklin. <laughs> Amy Jane Graver. Emily May Griffin. <laughs> Leah Victoria Hare. <laughs> Louisa Emily Hill. <laughs> Nicola Emma Jane Holmes. <laughs> Emily Olivia Ibbotson. Adna Youssef Ibrahim. <laughs> Owen Clear Thomas Jones. <laughs> Lily Mundy. <laughs> Helen Louise Pierce. <laughs> Larissa Victoria Perry. Chloe May Phillips. Sarah Jane Louise Redshaw. Rebecca Sarah Reed. Danielle Jordan Seaborn. Jessica Louise Starling. Samantha Stutt. Zoe Ellen Taylor. Joshua Peter Williams. Olivia Sean Woodhouse. Vice-Chancellor, I prevent, present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 5 to 11 School Direct Training. Katie Beckham. <laughs> Charles George Brown. <laughs> Chloe Mary Elizabeth Cooper. Jonathan Koish. Carly Melanie Dunn. Alice Farrant Bakewell. Eve De Daisy Trevor Farthing. Kirsten Harrison. Benedict Arthur Hart. 
Jake Hawksby. <laughs> Stephanie Louise Hook. <laughs> Jazz Yasmin Miller. <laughs> Daisy Amelia Player. <laughs> Emma Richards. <laughs> Robin Alice Veter. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 5 to 11 with Art Specialism. Nicola Charlotte Dodds. Martha Harriet Mary Emmett. Emily Olivia Ibbotson. Shana Jade Kersey. <laughs> Neve Small. <laughs> Elizabeth Rose Stewart Walvin. <laughs> Francesca Tromans. <laughs> Holly Webb. <laughs> Vice Chancellor. I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 5 to 11 with Behaviour Specialism. Kerry Louise Eales. <laughs> Emily Jane Godfrey. <laughs> Mia Bryony Tony Jenkins. Ruth Keat. Charlie Louise Kent. Ruby Lou Leach. Eloise Phillips. Abigail Louise Price. Chloe Indiana Jade Wilkins. Vice Chancellor, I prevent, present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 5 to 11 with EAL Specialism. Annabel Rose Blockwell. <laughs> Hilla Wilmina Hüttenen. Paige Effie Lacey. Emma Elise Chelsea Moody. <laughs> Naomi Claire Mullins. <laughs> Tanya and Maria Nazir. <laughs> Harriet Oswin. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 5 to 11 with English Specialism. Isabel Adams. <laughs> Amelia May Manning. <laughs> Minnie Elizabeth Mitchell. Olivia Beth Mullen, <laughs> Emily Jane Stiff, <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 5 to 11 with Mathematics Specialism. Lauren Hunt. Ella Nicole James. <laughs> Jessica Molly Poole. <laughs> Jessica May Smith. <laughs> Vice Chancellor. I present the following candidate for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 5 to 11 with Modern Languages Specialism. Cara Natasha Westlake.
Vice-Chancellor. I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 5 to 11 with Music Specialism. Ben Robinson. <laughs> Isabel Grace Walker. <laughs> Vice-Chancellor. I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 5 to 11 with PE Specialism. Phoebe Adams. <laughs> Hannah Croker. <laughs> Megan Joyce Gibb. Charlie Hacker. Yeah. <laughs> India Healing. Gemma Louise Howell. Fion Elizabeth Llewellyn. Millie Beth Phillips. Vice-Chancellor, I present the following candidates, my apologies, Bregan Jade Tomling, <laughs> Vice-Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 5 to 11 with Science Specialism, Olivia Sophia Ellis. Olivia Finn. Katie Louise Mitchell. Brian E. Shildrick. Lucy Marie Spratt. Vice Chancellor. I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 5 to 11 with SEND Specialism. Charlotte Bale. <laughs> Molly Nicole Eatwell. Charlotte Emma Lucy Harris. Shabnam Karim. Bethany Memory, Georgina Stallard, Georgia Ann Taylor. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGC Primary and Early Years 7 to 11. Dalal Alamin. <laughs> Paulina Danuta Kokowska is. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 7 to 11 with EAL Specialism. Tamsin Narissa Langford. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 7 to 11 with English Specialism. Thomas Howells. <laughs> Dulcie Eleanor Mascord. Ruth Robertson Scott. Amber Elizabeth Thomas. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Primary and Early Years 7 to 11 with Music Specialism. Kate Elizabeth Hodgkinson. <laughs> 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 
Vice-Chancellor, I present the following candidate for the award of postgraduate certificate in education with QTS recommendation in PGCE primary and early years 7 to 11 with PE specialism, Oliver William Mepham. Vice-Chancellor, I present the following candidate for the award of postgraduate certificate in education with QTS recommendation in PGC primary and early years 7 to 11 with science specialism, Bethan Langford. Vice-Chancellor, I present the following candidate for the award of postgraduate certificate in secondary education and practice, Oliver Glasspool. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of postgraduate certificate in education with QTS recommendation in PGC secondary art and design, Amelia Florence Harrison. Abigail Emily Hart. Eva Caitlin Jarvis. Laurence Elizabeth Jean Rushby. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of postgraduate certificate in education with QTS recommendation in PGC secondary biology. Georgina Kelly. Mark Robert Kellen Turner. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidate for the award of postgraduate certificate in education with QTS recommendation in PGC Secondary Business Studies, Rebecca Laura Compton. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of postgraduate certificate in education with QTS recommendation in PGC Secondary Chemistry, Pei Pei Fang. <laughs> Ting Wei Meng. Zakea Erlu. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidate for the award of postgraduate certificate in education with QTS recommendation in PGC Secondary Chemistry School Direct Training, Helena Amy Clark. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of postgraduate certificate in education with QTS recommendation in PGC Secondary Computing, William David Atkin. James Biles. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of postgraduate certificate in education with QTS recommendation in PGC Secondary Design and Technology, Lydia Ellen Fairclough. <laughs> Annie Elizabeth Miles. Harriet Nora Rose. <laughs> Jess Thomas. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidate for the award of postgraduate certificate in education with QTS recommendation and PGCE secondary design and technology, school direct training, Emily Hughes. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of postgraduate certificate in education with QTS recommendation in PGC Secondary English. Chloe Arrowsmith. <laughs> Lucy Charlotte Mary Eileen. <laughs> Eloise Charlotte. <laughs> Serena Elizabeth Dunlop. Ayanthi Ursula Huntington. <laughs> Tobias Oscar Skelton. <laughs> Vice
Vice-Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Secondary Maths. Megan Field. Sarah Ibieri Alimini. Thomas James Gray Ollison. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Secondary Physics. Ling Yan Li. John T. James Bavoas. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Secondary Drama. Mayor Bell. Emily Victoria Davies. Jade Laura Finley. Tia Elizabeth James. Megan Louise Peck. Emil Eric August Russo. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Secondary Geography. Eleanor Sophie Glenn. <laughs> Chloe Chelsea Radwell. <laughs> Clary Olivia Scott. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Secondary History. Rebecca Ruth Croker. <laughs> Benjamin John Davies. <laughs> Rebecca Jane Goodliffe. Aoife <laughs> Mary Monaghan. <laughs> Lauren Stanley Smith. Eloise Jadis Younger. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Secondary History School Direct Training. Clarissa Chantel Kogali. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Secondary Modern Foreign Languages. Irene Maria Arenas Alacon. <laughs> Kirsty Margaret Toms. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidate for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Secondary Music. Molly Elizabeth Granger Hull. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidate for the award of Professional Graduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Secondary PE. Cameron William Cousins. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Secondary PE. Jason William Allen. Claire Louise Byrne. Mia Church. Luke James Dane. Laura May Goodburn. Jaul Islam. Sarah 
Abby Kemp. Enya Sarah Kernan. Holly Vaughan Mamet. Matthew David Frank Piper. Nathaniel Willoughby Stark. Jessica Rose Amy Sutton. Dan Adam Townsend. Tyler J. Scott Brian Williams. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidate for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation, PCE Secondary PE School Direct Training. Rachel Cox. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Education with QTS recommendation in PGCE Secondary Religious Education. Katie May Johnson. <laughs> Caitlin Elizabeth McVeigh. Lauren Catherine Power. Vice Chancellor, in addition to those candidates presented to you here, I commend to you the other candidates listed but in absentia for conferment of their various awards. On my authority as Vice Chancellor of Bath Spa University, I confer the awards of those candidates here present and those in absentia. Graduates, in the time honoured tradition, you may now remove your hats. Well done! Well done! I'd like to invite Toby Skelton, who's just taken a PGCE in secondary English, to deliver the student valediction. Some fresh water there, you? Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue, and to every member of the education and PGCE faculty at Bath Spa. It is an incredible feat, what we've all managed to achieve over the past year. As on paper, Training to be a teacher initially looks like an impossible task. To undertake a degree with all the assessments, readings, seminars, last minute slash late night of writing sessions that implies, while also effectively starting to work as a proper teacher with all the marking, lesson planning, resource making, and last minute slash late night writing sessions that implies. But we did it. We're here and we've managed to come out of this year as the next cohort of qualified teachers. That is a momentous achievement, and I think I can say that with a decent level of authority, because it actually does feel momentous, at least to me, as I'm sure it does to all of you too. To know that all of this hard work has not only paid off, but that it has also given us arguably the best possible experience of what it means to be a teacher the not insignificant challenges, and the exceptional rewards. From frustrating last minute changes to your lessons, to that wonderful moment when you finally get through to that difficult child and they get it. There is no greater feeling than that. And none of this training would have been anything like as organized, diverse, and welcoming without the indispensable work of some key people who I want to briefly thank now on behalf of us all. To our mentors and lead trainers in our placement schools, who voluntarily took time out of their monstrously busy schedules to teach us their craft at no extra pay, I might add. The sheer level of generosity, selflessness, and solidarity that they have shown in supporting us to become the best teachers we can be has been immense. And I reckon most of us in this room 
would agree that we would not be half the teachers we are today without them. To our academic tutors, who's, who have acted on our behalf since September with unfailing tenacity and kindness to make sure not only that we knew everything that we needed to going into this profession, but more importantly, I'd argue, to provide us with a safe space and being a powerfully reassuring presence when things just got a little too hairy. There are not words enough to thank you in full. And of course, to the PGCE program leaders, without whom this course, all these degrees, literally could not happen. The level of organization, attention to detail, care and thought that has been put into the Bar Spa program has been immense. But not only that, the dedication that they have shown to listening to their students in order to improve the course further is a real testament to just how seriously they care about our experiences and ensuring that we are properly trained for the challenges that await us going forward. Thank you. Now, as an English teacher, I promise I really did try while writing this speech to not include a Shakespeare quote to end on. But it turns out that I am a walking parody of myself. <laughs> so I hope you'll forgive me for this indulgence. And when I am forgotten, as I shall be, and asleep in dull, cold marble, where no mention of me must be heard of, say, I taught thee. Thank you, and I wish you all the very, very best with your teaching careers. I'd like to finish the ceremony today by offering you a traditional Irish blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may your God hold you in the palm of his hand. This ceremony is now closed. Please stand for the academic procession. Please stand.
Thank you. 